Over the last few months, there have been quite a few plugins released that are specifically targeted at Adobe Atmos Music Production. Many of them are actually quite good. I reviewed some of them here on this channel. Now, the plugin today is a little bit different, and it is different in the sense that it was never really designed for Adobe Atmos, but it turns out to be a really useful tool for Adobe Atmos production. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at a plugin that, in my opinion, is a must-have in your Adobe Atmos toolbox, but the developer never really noticed that, and it's actually not mentioned in their marketing material at all. So let's have a look. But first of all, hello everybody, in case you're new here, my name is Michael Wagner. I teach at the Antoinette Westphal College of Media Arts and Design at Drexel University in Philadelphia. And on this channel, I talk about digital media, game design and spatial audio. And if any of those things interest you, I invite you to subscribe or join my Discord community. Invite link is in the description below. And with that being said, let's get right to our new plugin. The plugin I want to talk about today is Kashmir Chain. It has been released fairly recently and is available at Plugin Boutique. At the time of this recording, it is still on intro sale for 29 bucks, so it's fairly inexpensive. The basic premise of this plugin is fairly simple. What it allows you to do is it allows you to share effects chains across multiple tracks within a DAW session. And that can be very useful for a variety of scenarios. So for example, if you have vocals and you have multiple layers of vocals, each layer on a separate track, sometimes you want to apply an effect to all tracks simultaneously and you don't really want to go in to each individual track and make these changes manually. It would be nice to have sort of a way where you essentially, if you make a change to one of those tracks that form the layers of your vocal, uh, all the other layers are affected in exactly the same way. And this is ex exactly what Kashmir Chain is trying to address. What I found very curious is the fact that this plugin also solves a problem that we have in Dolby Atmos production, which comes from the fact that we don't really have a master bus in Dolby Atmos, which essentially means that if you want to apply an effect to all objects simultaneously, we only can do that by applying that effect to each individual object, and we don't really have a global control that allows us to make one change that distributes across all objects. Now, with this plugin, we can actually do that. Now, in order to understand what I'm talking about, let's have a brief look at a very simple Dolby Atmos project. The project that I'm going to use today is a very simple project. I've actually used it in some of my previous videos. So if you are watching my videos religiously, you're already familiar with that loop. Uh, it contains a synthet bass and the drums loop. I have everything in Cubase today, um, simply because that's the DAW that is most popular today uh, in terms of Dolby Atmos production. And uh, let's have a brief listen on how that sounds. So a synth loop, a bass loop, and a drums loop. Now what I've done today is I have routed those three tracks as objects into a Dolby Atmos setup. So on the Dolby Atmos bus, which is a 7.1.4 bus, we have the Dolby Atmos renderer. And in the Dolby Atmos renderer, we see that these objects are coming in at channels 11 through 16. So let's play that again. So, so we have... And we have positioned them slightly. It doesn't really make any difference for the video today, but uh, I kind of I just made sure that they have as, as much action on all the individual channels as possible. Uh, if you are not familiar with uh, how to set up Dolby Atmos in Cubase, I invite you to watch a video that I did about uh, how to get a project started, a Dolby Atmos project started in Cubase. Essentially, what you need to do is you need to create a 7.1.4 track. It could also be the uh, master bus. You can also put that into the control room if you want to. Um, but I usually kind of just use a separate track for that. And on this 7.1.4 track, I'm going to put Adobe Atmos renderer. And then the other thing that you need to do is you need to go into the project settings under EDM authoring for Adobe Atmos. You need to select essentially what renderer that you're using. In Cubis, once again, we only have the option to use the internal renderer. If you are on Noendo, you would also have the option to, to choose an external renderer renderer. And then we need to add three objects. And these three objects are essentially the drum track, the bass track, and the synth track. And they are routed into channels 11 through 16. Now, one of the things that a lot of people have trouble understanding is the fact that in a Dolby Atmos project, you don't really have a master bus. Uh, and in order to understand why that is, let's, let's once again look at what is actually happening in our Dolby Atmos setup. The problem comes from the fact that the uh, export of Adobe Atmos master file works differently to a traditional music piece. And the reason for that is that the export is actually done through the Adobe Atmos renderer. 
So instead of rendering out the 7.1.4 track on which the Dolby Atmos renderer sits, uh, what is actually happening is that uh, if you export Dolby Atmos into a master file, the Dolby Atmos renderer will export all 128 channels uh, separately along with all the positional data of each individual object. And that essentially means uh, there's never a possibility for us to control the sound signature of all tracks simultaneously because they are, we, we never really have any control over them. They are routed into the Dolby Atmos renderer and in the renderer they're exported into a Dolby Atmos master file and we don't really have any master bus or anything that allows us to do the traditional master bus processing that we're usually used to. Now one way to solve this problem is to use a plugin that that can replicate an effects chain across multiple tracks. And we've already looked at one such solution, which was Hornet Sump. I did a video about that not that long ago. Um, I'm going to post a link in the description below. Check it out. It's actually really interesting. Now, what Hornet Sump essentially does is it is an integrated limiter compressor EQ that you put on each individual object track, and then essentially it allows you to control all object tracks simultaneously. It has also the advantage that you can also use it on a bed. It's really nice. However, it has one disadvantage, and that is you are limited to the effects that the plugin provides. So while it's really a good limiter, a good EQ, a good compressor, you couldn't do something like distortion, for example, or any other effects. So in that sense, it would be nice to have something that's a little bit more flexible. And Kashmir Chain provides you that flexibility. It allows you to use your favorite effects across multiple tracks and kind of... Um, control them from one place. So in order to see how that works, let's let's have a look. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to put the Kashmir Chain plugin on all of our object tracks. Now Kashmir Chain comes in two versions. One is the, um, the leader and one is the uh, follower. So the idea is that you need one plugin that sort of is in control over all the other plugins. So what we need to do first is we need to select one of our object tracks to be the main track. And I'm just going to use the first one. So let's uh, open up the, the synth uh, settings here and let's add a... Um, chain, Kashmir chain, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a leader plugin here, so that's the chain leader, uh, so I'm going to leave that open here. And then I'm going to add followers to the other objects that I have, in my particular case I have two objects here, so let's uh, do the first one here, um, that is, let's add a follower, so here we have the follower for the bass, and then let's do the third one, the drums, and let's add a follower here as well. And the idea is obviously that uh, uh, whatever you do in the leader uh, will replicate to all the followers. So if I make any changes to the synth, to what's happening here on the synth track, it will automatically replicate to all the followers. Now, in order to be able to actually do that, the first thing we need to do is we need to link them. They're currently unlinked, so we see the follower plugins uh, show status unlinked. So let's link them to our group. Now we can have multiple groups here. I'm only going to use one group. All the objects are sort of in one group. That's the idea. So let's let's link that to chain number one. And uh, let's link that here as well. So let's add a plugin to our chain and um, let's add a an instance of five filter pro -Q. So why not? You can you can really add anything that you want to, but let's let's do pro -Q. Um so I'm going to add a plugin here to the leader. Um, so let's add one here and let's uh, queue. And uh, let's, uh, I don't know, let's, let's add the audio unit version. And as you see, as soon as I add that plugin to the leader, it was automatically added to the followers as well. And that essentially means that I now have the plugin available. And any change that I make in the leader will automatically be replicated to all the follower plugins as well. So let's open up the Pro EQ on the leader here. And maybe let's also open up the Pro EQ on the others as well. So we have the Pro EQ here on the first um, object and here on the, on the second object. And uh, so, so this here is now the, uh, the 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 plugin that is on the on the leader plugin. So if I now make a change, you can see that it's automatically updated on all the other instances of Kashmir Kashmir change as well. So let's 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 see how that uh, that sounds and what we can do with it. So let's play. So that essentially allows me now to change the uh, overall ambience or the overall sound signature like it I would be able to do in a regular master bus. So let's 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 maybe add a I don't know. Let's let's add a 
low cut filter. And that's really all there is to it. And uh, to me, this is quite amazing. This is such a useful plugin for Dolby Atmos production, but in the entire marketing material, they never even mentioned it. Um, it it's, it's kind of mind-boggling that kind of you could you could miss that. Um, so if you are in Dolby Atmos, if you're Dolby Atmos music production, I would think that this is a must-have plugin, to be perfectly honest. Um, uh, it is incredibly easy to use, and it allows you a lot of flexibility. You can now use all kinds of effects um, that you normally would use in a master bus, and you can replicate that in the Dolby Atmos Music setup. And uh, you're not, not only limited to the traditional things like a Q or a limiter or a compressor, uh, you can do all kinds of things, distortion, you can do, um, you know, kind of lo-fi effects, whatever whatever your heart desires, you can you can do with uh, Kashmir Chain in the Dolby Atmos setup. Now, I do have to point out that there are also a couple of disadvantages with this plugin, um, and uh, especially when compared to Hornet Samp. Now, the first, obviously, is that you don't have that same control over the sidechain that you have in Hornet Sump. So in this particular case, what's really happening is, if, for example, if you add a compressor, the compressor will really only re like, react to the track itself. So you cannot really have a, an external sidechain that goes into that. So you couldn't kind of do more of a global uh, sidechain like you can do in, in Hornet Sump. The second disadvantage is that, uh, at the moment at least, this is only working on stereo tracks. So you can primarily only use that for optical objects. If you want to use that on a bed, you're a little bit out of luck. So you couldn't do things like, for example, putting the leader uh, plugin onto the bed and then all the followers on the object, which would be really nice. But uh, at least I didn't get it to work. Maybe by the time you watch that video, they have included the possibility to also work with higher channel counts. But at the moment, at least it's only stereo. And the third thing I should mention is that at least on my setup, it crashed on me once. Now I have to admit that I pushed it to its limit. So that might not be an issue for you. And it might also be just kind of some early bugs because I'm still working with essentially the first version of this plugin. So by the time you're watching that, that might no longer be an issue. So Overall, this is a really useful plugin, and it still puzzles me that the developer didn't figure out that this is actually useful for Dolby Atmos production. It's a really useful tool, and once again, if you are in Dolby Atmos, if you're working with Dolby Atmos, I personally think this is an absolute must-have. It gives you some flexibility back that you had with the master bus and that you lost in Dolby Atmos production, and it allows you to create effects change across multiple objects, and that is something really, really, really cool. But this is really everything I wanted to say today. Thanks again for watching. Really appreciate it. Um, now, this was a shorter video because this, quite frankly, is a very simple plugin, but it's very useful. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please uh, feel free to use the comment section below or join my Discord community. Invite link is in the description below. And with that being said, see you at the next video.